What about, though, the furriest member of our family? How do you know what's best for your pooch? Is your dog's diet contributing to bad behaviour? Bad dogs, bad diet. Now, Tom Lonsdale's been thinking about this. Tom's been a vet for 30 years and has written a book, Raw Meaty Bones. He believes processed pet food causes bad health and can lead to aggression. This from Mary Jane Agate. <laughs> It'd be fair to say we pay a lot of attention to what we eat. We're careful about our kai, but do we take the same care when it comes to our best friend? In the case of our carnivore companions, we tend to feed them out of the can or the packet. Highly processed food every day of the week, every week of the year. Very bad for them. Very bad indeed. Tom Lonsdale is an Australian vet whose pet project has been animal diets. He believes cats and dogs should be treated like carnivores and fed raw meaty bones. He's written a book about it. Think of them as modified wolves. Look at this fellow. This is Ras. He's 10. He's got the colouring of a wolf, the shape of a wolf, um, and the attitudes, the outlook of a wolf. Some of them are somewhat modified uh, and disguised. But the reality is he's a wolf underneath. Over the past few months, we've seen a number of these animal tendencies through dog attacks. Aggression that Tom believes can be traced to bad diet. I think it's a lot to do with what they're eating. These are the more common options that are available to people. And as you can tell, this doesn't resemble anything like uh, they would be eating if they were given their chance in the wild. Look at this stuff here. Can you see that that just macerates under this fork here? Now, the food is supposed to act as the toothbrush, toothpaste, and the dental floss, all in one go. I, I wouldn't mind cracking one of these and just giving it a go. <laughs> you're wrong, you're wrong. Right, okay, I'm on my own here. But anyway, look at this. It, it's a, this is wheat. Sorry, did we just see that? Is because it tasty? You want to try it? <laughs> It's very, I'm sorry. It, I'll bow to your it, superior it, knowledge. It, it, it's very much like uh, the sort of thing you don't crack with your, your coffee. Here, looking at these, well, they were all right until the butcher put them through the bandsaw. And it was a sizable piece which would have occupied a Kelpie or a Labrador for some, some time. But, but what would he do about this? Do you like that? So, so he certainly is interested. Alice, come. Flip Calcoon is an animal behaviourist. He believes it's not what dogs eat, it's how they're brought up that makes them aggressive. What do you feed these guys? Oh, my dogs actually get a, a generally a dry food, and um, that's just because of the convenience and that I know that they're getting the nutrition that they want. So it's, there's no quick fix then? There's no easy fix, feed your dog properly or do something magical and all of a sudden everything will be rosy? No, what, the magical thing that needs to be done is that you spend time working with your dog and training it. What we find is that uh, when animals are, are transferred back onto their more natural diet, a peace seems to descend upon them, a contentment. And a lot of the bad behaviour just simply disappears. And Tom says that's not the only change. Other doggy demons like bad breath and farting disappear. And with bones, the amount of dog poo reduces by two thirds. Change the diet and you just get dramatic changes in so many instances. Tom's theory hasn't gone down so well with the pet food manufacturers. Pet food is worth more than $200 million a year. I think they're currently number, uh, number six in the supermarket category, so it's a, it's a huge business. Richard Brake is from the Pet Food Manufacturers Association. He says there are international standards that determine what goes into the can, no, and it is no, nutritious. No. If a product has got complete and balanced on it, then it's delivering everything that, uh, that a cat or a dog needs, and there shouldn't be any behavioural problems arising out of that. And now for the real taste test. We'll see which one of these tasty morsels Raz goes for. What do you like, Raz? It's a bone, a bit of jelly meat. After a moment's hesitation, it was straight to the jelly meat. But there's always room for a bit more. And they leave the best till last. They sit down and they chew the raw meaty bones. Well, Tom says the same goes for cats. Give them chicken necks, apparently. 
You can hear more from Tom Lonsdale on Face to Face with Kim Hill tonight at 9.35.